This conference will now be recorded. Awesome. All right, so we are getting started today. We're going to continue in Ephesians 4.20. Anybody have the question that we were uh, wrestling with this week that I sent out in text? Anybody get the text? I've got it somewhere. Well, you're yeah. supposed to have it up and going, Anthony. <laughs> well, I've got it here. There we go. Based on the have not of Ephesians 4.20, what do we yeah. have? There we go. So you, 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 in the Christian life, we or the Christ-centered life, we often hear, well, but I don't have this, and I, I don't want to become uh, give my life to Christ because then I'll have to give up so much. My question is, what do we have? Destruction, sin. We what? Destruction and sin. No, that's, well, we don't have destruction. We, we don't have uh, sin as we walk with Christ. But what do we have? The other side of the coin. Life. What's that, Brother Kyle? We have life. We have life. Well, I, I was already living before I gave my life to Christ. I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Well, that question kind of reminds me of, and I'm so bad with names, but in the Old Testament, I mm -hmm. think it was Abraham that was before God, and, and God was saying, this is the land that you can go to, and uh, the only challenge is I'm not going with you. and um, you know, if we're not going with God, we don't have the presence with, of God with us, and I don't want to be there. If we're not going with God, we don't have the presence of God. So, so what do we have if we are going with God, based on we what we just presence. said? The presence, yeah. Then let's go back over to Kyle, because um, you, you know you talked about this life thing. Uh, I, I was already living beforehand. So what? I, I, what do you mean I have life? I already am li living. Well, the life that we had, uh, death was part of that life. But the life that Christ offers has no death in it. Amen. Eternal life. Amen. Amen. Totally different. Made new. Recreated. Absolutely. I you think know, also go ahead. Uh, you're obviously looking at the have not it, with it saying you have not so learned. So mm -hmm. um, in this context, it was talking to people that were a bit estranged from Christ, if you like. But then I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far to say if we what we have that we have not as to say we have learned Christ and we know all Christ and this that. I wouldn't go as far to say that, but I would say that what we have is the best teacher. In fact, the ultimate teacher that will teach us his ways, and that's what we do have. We have the best teacher who can teach us his ways, and he can he breaks the mold so that basically we don't have to be the way we've been conformed to by this world, that we can actually become more like him. And even on the other side of glory, that's when things are really going to kick off because... He just wants to be able to see that he can work with us now, that we're willing to accept him as the better way. So that it, it, it's like putting your name, it's like really putting your name down for something special, for real special honors. That's what it is. Yeah, man. So I'd like to mention a couple other things that I see that we have. But I agree the verse itself is talking about have not. It just propelled my own thought into what is it that we have? Do we have joy? Amen. Do we have peace? Do we have Amen. hope? Amen. Do we have promises? Do we have a Amen. friend? Amen. You know, a lot of people they don't they are, are isolated and such, and so they don't really have friends. And do we have a friend? A friend that will stick closer to us than even a brother. I mean, that's just super cool. And, and I've just, that's just a small portion 
Not any friend, coolest friend you could ever get, this son of God. I'm sorry, say that again, Marcel. Said not just any friend, like any average Joe out and about. We've got the coolest mm -hmm. friend, the son of God. And he wants to no, make you his brother. Absolutely. He wants and, to make uh, you a, a co-heir, a son of God. His yeah, and brother. And yeah. the only way uh, for some... The only way for somebody to be closer than a brother because you shared a mother was for the spirit of God to dwell within you. Because that's mm. closer than a brother could get because he's inside of you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then I also, because I cross-referenced the other translations and this, it was basically saying that this is not the way of life that you learned or this isn't what you learned about Christ. So it kind of references verse 19, talking about lasciviousness and uncleanliness or greediness. So it's saying what it's referencing back in those verses is not the way of life that you learned about Christ. So it's kind of saying, this is not the way that you learned about him. So it's saying like all those things is not how you learn Christ. Amen. Amen. And there's, there's another thing, what, what Kyle's just made me think that Put the what you have reflected onto verse 19 and you've got everything that you need that you don't need to be greedy you've also got love so there's no need to work on cleanliness and lasciviousness and you've got the truth as well because i think truth is also with the unclean is like the opposite of the uncleanness and it's like you yeah we have love and we and through that we have feeling so we're not past feeling because if you have not these things or you are these things in in, in this tent in this context if the context was what you have you have feeling you have love you have truth you have peace you have all those things what's in that verse that we read before where it gives you that lovely uh, ingredients list of everything that god's pouring out onto you amen you know amen. i'm thinking of Another way that this, that also that speaks is a guy and I have been close like forever. And we pretty minute, well know. been alive forever. That's not possible. I know, but you know, that's a terminology, but there you <laughs> go. I, we've been very close. We had a separation for a bit, but we've been very close uh, as brother and sister and, and just very close. And how can you get closer than a brother, um, even if you're close. Well, I'm reminded of the scripture that said he formed us in our innermost being. In other words, he knows us deeper than we even know ourselves. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the call. Amen. Awesome. All right. So we, we are on... Um, Ephesians 4.20, Ephesians 4.20, and <clears throat> we have gotten about halfway through, well, maybe even more than halfway, we might get into 21 today, um, we are in the who, what, where, when, why, and we're in the how part of it, can somebody read uh, Ephesians 4.20? I've got it. Go ahead. Um, but ye have not so learned um, Christ. Correct. So what is the how of this statement? So what, what do we see in how? But ye. Okay. How is that a how? Because the only way you have not learned is down to ye, yourself. That's how. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say ye and learned, kind of. Hey, Amen. <clears throat> so help me understand nope. the learned, how learned fits into that. Because. Christ is something you learned, and this is saying that 
what they are talking about is not something that you learn. So you have learned Christ, but it's referencing something that you did not learn about Christ. Hmm. Interesting. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd agree with what Kyle's saying there, because in most ways you'd put Christ as the how. But I'm not confident in that fact, I would. That's what I have done. Go ahead. But but you see, in this context here, it's talking about um, this is talking about you have not learned. So Christ is not the reason you haven't learned something. So it's like it's in a negative context. So Christ is not responsible for negativity. We are. If it Very said well you said. have so learned Christ, then I would accept Christ as the how, because you wouldn't have learned Christ without Christ. But you can't hold Christ responsible. He can't be the reason why you didn't learn. I would completely agree with you on that. Unless you wanted it's to flip of. it again. He's the reason that you're exposed as not learning him, because he's the example. Kyle? And it sort of borrows from verse 19, because if what we're talking about we didn't learn of Christ, then what they're speaking of, we have to we would have to reference 19 to see, or even back to 18, to see what it is that they're talking about that we didn't learn from Christ. So it kind of it kind of borrows from the previous verses. And I'm going to stop us right at the moment. I just remembered we haven't uh, opened with a word of prayer. Yeah. Um, who would like to open us up with a word of prayer? Father. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Father, today for feeding us with your daily bread and uh, giving us the cup that you're overflowing with your goodness and your greatness. I thank you today that we can gather with brothers and sisters all over the world and receive your goodness and give you praise and all the glory you deserve. What a worthy king you are. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Is there any other thought process on hell before we get into the encouragement corner? All right. In the in the previous verses, we have taken a detailed look at those who have chosen to opt out. It can make things look so bleak and dismal, and they are. They are for such as Satan, that is. Can somebody read Ezekiel 28.18? Ezekiel 28.18. Vicki? Yeah, hold on one second. Um... 2818? Yeah. Okay. Let me get out of NIV and into King James version. Okay. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy, oh, I can't read this. i got to read. Um, the New King James is what you use, right? I, I, you can use New King James. Okay. I can't read all the these and nows because it doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. <clears throat> you defiled <laughs> your sanctuary by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst, it devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the in the sight of all you, who saw you. As well as those who opt out of following the Lamb of God. Malachi 4.3, Mark. Malachi 4.3. In Malachi 4.3, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. 
And then we reach a very small but profoundly positive word, but. Are you aware that the words, but God, occur 46 times in KJV scriptures? Here are three very powerful ones. Second Chronicles 20, 15. Second Chronicles 20, 15. Boniface, are you there? 2015. Yeah. All right. I will go to Scarlett. Okay. She's getting it. There you go. This one. That's the one. Okay. And he said, Hearken. Hearken. Oh, sorry. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king. Jehoshaphat, thou, thou saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid or de dismayed. dismayed by reason of this great militude, multitude. multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So in this case, uh, it looked like the the whole military was going to be coming against them. The the whole their enemy was going to defeat them. But God was reminding them, this isn't your your battle, but God's. Um, and Psalm 49, 14 through 15. Irene? Like sheep, they were laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. Selah. And then one more, Galatians 3.18. Marcel? Galatians 3.18. Just loading up. This conference will now be recorded. Oh, what's up with that? Hmm. For if the inheritance be of the law. It is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Amen. Simply put, when everything seems to be at its worst, we can rely on two powerful words, but God. Let's unlock more of on what this word but means here. But ye... If we thought that there were many but God references in KJV, there are even more but ye's, 90 to be precise. Here is a very beautiful one, Romans 8.15. Anthony? Yeah. Romans 8. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Back in our focus verse, we read, but ye have not. We will find out in a moment what these words mean for this verse, but first, this verse comes to mind in reading the above words. James 4 2. Uh, go with Mark. James 4 2.
Okay. Ye lust, and ye have not. Ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. What are we lusting and coveting for, but do not have, because we simply neglect to ask? What are we so desiring to have that we would not mind killing for and yet fail to obtain because we are not simply asking? Question that I have here is, what are we asking? What do we need to be asking for with that kind of a construct? Forgiveness. 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 And I would also suggest the character of Christ, because who comes to kill, steal, and destroy? Is that the Father or the Son? No, it's so Satan. Who, yeah, exactly. Can I make a comment? Yes. So Can Matt I, read that verse again? What's that? Can Matt? Can I have the verse number? Can Matt read it again, please? Yeah, and then he has something to share as well. Yes, yeah, says, "Ye lust and ye have not; ye kill and desire to have." and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. And the comment I was going to make was in reference to the question Guy just asked. Um, in, in a sense, it gives us the opposite in the next coming verses. It says, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. So there's something wrong with what we're asking and how we're asking it. It's, then it says, uh, that you may consume it upon your lusts. It's for me. It's about me. And then ye adulterers, adulteresses, you know not that the friendship with the world is enmity with God. So we're looking for worldly things and things that will get us somewhere in the world when we should be looking at God and things that will go to him and in our relationship with him. So to build on that, to build on that, if I uh, kill my opponent in uh, by by putting them down and by degrading them and, and whatnot like that, where I, wherein I'm elevating myself, that's a belie I believe exactly what we're talking about. Um, you know, good sportsmanship. Um, you know, even within like boxing and such. Uh, which, you know, I bring that up because of Marcel, but um, good sportsmanship is what you're going, is you're not out to um, totally thrash your your opponent, but you're out to show if you have a better skill set, a better tool set, a better ability than they, but that's, you know, there, there's a fine line there. There's a there is a fact, whatever is done in faith is not done in sin, but anything that's not done in faith is done in sin, and that's Romans uh, 14, 23. Mm -hmm. But what, what Mark was saying and what it made me see, and all I can hear is the verse from uh, where Jesus is saying, give up your possessions. Because that listing, that I didn't get the verse number that he listed in James, desires of the flesh, the killing. James 4 2. James, I'm going to get it up. James 4 2. It's all talking about each one of those in that list. Ye lust, that's a possession. You want to possess, that's wanting to possess a, a, an object or a person, and you have not. As much as you want them or you claim them and you make them your possession, they're still not yours. And if you kill them so that nobody else then can have them, then you still don't have them because now nobody's physically got that person or that object anymore. And you fight and you war and you have not because that's just not the way it works. Because Jesus says, give up your possessions. And people don't realize how deep rooted that actually is. It's more than just like giving up your money and giving up your your house and your car. It's giving up your self-righteous possessions, your deeds, your good deeds, your your uh, the, your ego, your pride, your big, the, the thing what justifies you to be better than somebody else or to be more powerful than somebody else. Jesus is teaching us to give yeah. up our possessions and you inherit everything. I mean, Jesus says, ask and you'll be received anyway. 
But a lot of people just there in prayer like this. Please, I want this million pound to drop on me, and I want the best woman I can get, and I want this and I want that. They're not asking in faith. One, they're just asking for what they're lusting after. That's Amen. one. Th- and another thing is, if we ask for something that Christ wants, as we ask for Christ to show us these works that He wants doing, He'll deliver us. So what? That is whether it be say now I want to deliver someone a lost sheep from the say a, a boxing club. He'll it, it'll deliver it, whether it means I have to come out victorious or come out a lose a loss. But in another yeah, for it's still a victory. It's still a victory because in order for it to make any sense in what uh, it's meaning because. What's the point in gathering up things in our world now to just Amen. be left behind? We need to gather up as possessions in heaven. So if that means going out there and preaching to every step, every single soul on this planet, it means going out there and doing that. If that's our calling, that's what we need to be doing. We need to hear us calling, use us gifts to bring people to the kingdom of God is what I'm reaping from like this verse is like... Uh, we're getting greediness out of this verse and people what's like wanting, lusting, desire for what they want, the, their human eyes see, not the spiritual eyes. And you we know. just read in the previous verse that the battle is God's. So what are we at war at? Do you know what I mean? Why are we at war if the battle is God's? What are, what are we going to claim? We want heaven to look this way. We want heaven to sound this way. We want glory to be this. We want glory to be that. We, that's the vanity of our own minds. And I think King Solomon just, I don't know if Marcel's even read it, but in Ecclesiastes 2, I think it's Ecclesiastes 2 um, or 11, I can't remember. And, and now Solomon's totally having a wrestle with God. And he's like, oh, I'm so fed up of this. If I'm a rich man and, and I have to leave my belongings to another man, what if, he, what if he's not a wise man? What if he's a fool? And then the fools inherit everything. And then he gets even more tormented. Because what he's realizing is like if we if we amass treasure on this earth, like bars of gold, diamonds, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, we will die and that will be left. Where will those possessions remain? They will remain in this world. And for so long, that possession still belongs to the God of this world. It will serve for him to tempt somebody else, to make someone else greedy. It will serve his purpose again. But even he deceived himself. Because Solomon works out everything is to be inherited by the children of God. Because only through the resurrections and those who survive through their own choices that come in the first resurrection, the children of God, they will inherit all things. All things will be left in this world. And even Satan himself won't be around to see it when it finally is given everybody in love, share, whatever's there and left. So be it. Amen. Uh, Kyle, did you have something? I was just going to say, take no thought after what you will eat. That verse came to mind. Amen. Amen. Because he know uh, they know what we need. Um, now, there there's a difference between taking no thought. In other words, we're not just, you know, some people will spend lots of time in taking and making sure they've got all the right stuff. Um, we're not to be like that. We're, we're to ask and allow him to provide. I can give you a good example uh, uh, of, of this financially with my wife and I. We were, uh, they, um, our first office that we were working in, they were going to retire. We knew we weren't going to stay there. We weren't going to go to Black Hills and we weren't going to open our own clinic because all three doors shut. I turned to God and I said, Lord, you made a me, you made us massage therapists, something I would never do. And you brought us to South Dakota, a place I would never live. We need a place to practice, fix it. And he did. He did just, the whole thing 
went it just flowed right in and uh that is what will happen if we hold on to him does it mean that it's always going to be easy wasn't easy for Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who went through the fire it wasn't easy for Daniel uh in the lion's den who went into the lion's den uh, the, uh, we is it easy? No. But sure, is it, sir, it, wasn't it easy. does it build our character? Absolutely. Even if we end up dying in the process, knowing that we died holding on to the baton, the 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 hand, the the, the uh, holding on to Christ and his father, we know we have the victory. So Amen. we can't lose. Look at Mary. Joseph, Mary's wife. Mm. Mary's husband. Sorry, I got that mixed up. But um, <laughs> Mary's husband, he, he, it wasn't easy for him, and he had, he, he was so obedient. It's unbelievable. He was listening and seeing dreams. If he hadn't have had that obedience, and he hadn't have listened and accepted those dreams and those visions, then. Obviously, he God knew when he called him because he could see that he had to be that person who was obedient to be part of that plan because he had to respond to what he was being told. And so many of us were getting told all sorts of things and shown all sorts of things. And I'm not saying the people here, I'd want to say that, I don't mean it that way. I, I mean, just in, in general in this world, that we ignore it and then we stamp our feet and wonder why, we, why, we, why things happened the way they would. But there was always... There's always something calling us. There's always something directing us because he's the good shepherd. It's Amen. just our choice to respond to that. And again, it's mm. like uh, the other Joseph, Joseph Technical Dream Coat. He went through a lot of stuff. But we were doing a bit of it. I forgot to tell you. But we were doing it like a, uh, in the church. We are doing like a bit of a study like in a room about this. And uh, we were looking at like Joseph's life and how he... Yeah, trusting God for it all. Like at first, his brothers didn't, they did very much disowned him, they didn't want to know him, and uh, they ended up in a hole. Next thing he knows, he's a servant for uh, a high respected man. Uh, but then his wife, the, the man who is serving his wife, uh, comes on to him, like uh, in relations side of things, and Joseph, he totally like. Um, it's like no, he steps away from that, and the man ends up getting oh him chucked into the well. The woman says um, accusations against him, saying that uh, he's uh, attacked her in the in that vicious ways and that, and they, he gets sent to prison for something he did not do. But at this time, Joseph is keeping his trust in the Lord in prison. Like I can't remember exactly what happens, but like some like some big turnout, he ends up being then one of the most high honored uh, the king, has a, the king has a special seat for him where he's one of the most high high honored uh, people like a, pre a president of like whatever the kingdoms was in them days it were like uh, in, Egypt, yeah. in Egypt yeah it's like we really, really had a high set then because of uh, I can't remember the full story but we were learning about it and Again. I was just thinking like how he went through all this, he, he was going through the fire, like in the shadow of death as it talks in Psalm 23. But he was seeing the light through the other side of that, like Christ was there with him. Even though Christ wasn't born yet, but Christ was there, not born in the flesh, but born in the spirit. Christ was there with him, taking him through this, like reassuring him that he's going to be all right and taking him to the right decisions because uh, it explains in the bible that the woman that was asking for this offer joseph or whatever like affairs against her husband was supposed to have been like one of the beautifulest women in egypt it was a king's wife it wasn't just an ordinary woman and obviously when uh, joseph rejected this the woman obviously got angry and obviously the character of satan was in the woman tempting joseph at this time and joseph was declining uh, absolutely everything at this time uh, well but well, satan were coming like he had an answer for it each time and that so yeah i think i'm coming a bit off track here so amen 
So um, let's have Irene read Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be open. For what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake or a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Amen. Amen. Back in Ephesians 4.20, the next two words we read are, so learned. Dear reader, neither the Father nor the Son desire for us to be ignorant, unknowing robots of someone else's thoughts, views, and opinions. In fact, we have quite significant counsel given us in this regard. Vicki uh, Hosea, Four six, Hosea four six. Hold on one second here. Four six. Yes, please. Okay. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being <coughs> for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Of all the knowledge we can gain, what would be paramount import? Uh, 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 paramount of import. According to the Apostle Paul, this would be the answer. Uh, let's see. Brother Kyle, I'm going to have you read... 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2. Uh, second. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 out of the message. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First Jesus and who he is. Then Jesus and what he did. Jesus crucified. Amen. So of all the knowledge we can gain that would be of paramount import, what is the most important? Jesus. Amen. Oh. Well, Paul said, I don't want to hear anything from you except Jesus or Christ and Christ crucified. Like, he was very adamant about that. Very which echoes his words spoken here to the Ephesians. Ephesians 4.20. Boniface, are you there? Can I say something? Just one second. Yes. Anthony? Sorry, I'm just reading this in KJV, and it's like a little bit different. And it, it is it a says, little bit right, different in KJV, for sure. It says, I totally agree with what Kyle just said, but it says here, um, for I determined not to know anything among you save jesus so anything that isn't jesus he doesn't want to know and him crucified for i determined not to know anything among you save jesus christ and him crucified so what he's basically saying is if it's not in jesus christ it's the character of satan bottom line amen he's just totally sliced it in he's just took a knife and just cut that straight down the middle and split it in half and just said look if it's not in Christ, I don't want to know. If you're not speaking in the character of Christ, then I can't accept that. And if Amen. you're not crucifying yourself as Christ crucified himself, then I can't accept that. And because, they, sorry, go on, Kyle. 
No, that was just bringing up the thought in my mind that people were trying to fulfill the law, which was not of faith, and they were pretty much trying to martyr themselves or make themselves the sacrifice. And you know, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm going to keep this law or keep those hand washes, these ceremonies. I'm going to do this and do that. But then Paul is turning it around that if the focus is not you, it's Christ. And that's all I want to hear. And being the man that he is, everybody would like, he's kind of like giving them this uh, a rule of thumb that it's not about you. It's all about him. So stop looking at yourself and look to him. He's asking them to show him. He's basically saying, show me Christ. Show me Christ. And I can answer that like how they would, should answer that is they're in the body of Christ. So they should be able to reveal Christ through the self if they're truly saved. But by they're saying, I want this and I want that or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I've done that. Whose character does that sound like if he's talking in? Does he sound like he's talking in the character of Christ? Or does it sound like he's talking in the character of Satan by going on like, I want this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this. Like when Satan's going on about and I will cast down and further the stars and I will do this and rain upon the earth, this, that and the other. It's the character of Satan talking then instead of the character of Christ. And I think mm. what Paul's pointing out here is like, be careful whose character you're in. Because by using your own vanity and like by using like your, your self-righteousness, what about the righteousness of Jesus? What about what Jesus has done for us? Because we can't repay that. We can only give glory and give thanks. Share it. And share what he's done good. Amen. I'm going to hand the mic over to Mark. So I guess I'm thinking about that verse we were just discussing. And I see the the reference to Jesus Christ and him crucified, not necessarily referring to what you're speaking to me about, but what I am sharing, what I know. So um, he is saying, this is the focus of my conversation. This is the thrust of my purpose. This is... Um, I'm not going to be up debating about the the whatever the the hot topic is of the day. I'm not going to be talking politics or sports or or um, yeah whatever else it is. It's um, I I have a purpose and I'm I'm going to stick with that purpose. Amen. And I could could I add to that? It's like. Uh... We've watched the study about Job, and I think this fits really well in with this. It was only on YouTube and that, but I think it fits really well with this. God is not a vending machine. We can't say we're doing these good works, so we get heaven out of it. We do no good works. Only God does the good. We just like uh, the feet that carry the goodness. Exactly. Look at what Paul's saying. For I determined not to. I determined not to know anything among you save jesus christ so he's even including himself it's not about me it's not about paul it's not paul that's speaking to you i don't know these things i'm the man who was reading the law of sin and death and telling everyone to kill christians this is jesus christ revealing the truth it was him that was crucified not i stop amen. looking to me and start looking to christ amen all right so boniface are you there Yes, I'm here. Can I have you read? Uh, so, which echoes his words spoken here to the Ephesians? We're going to go back to Ephesians 4.20. Can you read that for me? But ye have not so learned Christ. As well as you and I living life today. The mm -hmm. world may be and is spiraling downward in a chaotic cyclone of disaster from which there is absolutely no hope of recovery. However, given that we have the knowledge of Christ, Jesus, the Son of God, no matter what happens, we retain hope in a hopeless situation. We retain joy 
in a joyless situation. We retain peace in a peaceless situation. They can even take away, uh, take our lives, and through Christ and his Father, we remain steadfastly confident that by their power poured out in our lives, we have the victory. We found the greatest love of all time in the darkest place, in the darkest valley. Because this earth is just chaos, it's madness, there's people out there killing, murdering, raping, and doing all these bad things. But we've found that greatest love. I challenge that. Go on. You said we found the greatest love. I challenge it by saying I agree with everything except the greatest love of all found us. Amen. Yeah. Is that, yeah. <laughs> How dare you challenge me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I don't generally uh, end my story with uh, this, but I there's a lyric I'd like to read through, and well, it's put I put forward by Guy Penrod, so it must be a good lyric. It's called "Victory in Jesus." I heard an old old story. How a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary to save a wretch like me i heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sins and won the victory O victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus Come and heal my broken spirit. And someone, and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. O oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. All my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. So um, any any closing thoughts on this piece? All right. So let's go over to verse 21. We have a couple minutes left. Let's go over to verse 21. And can somebody read Ephesians 4, 21 in anything but KJV. Go ahead. Kyle. What? <laughs> what is that? Oh, Spanish. Oh, all right. Go for it, Mark. Uh, so anyway, I can. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I can do but, the amplifier. Yeah, let's try the amp. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Just, so, uh, yeah, go ahead, Anthony. <laughs> In fact, you have really heard him and have been taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus, revealed in his life and personified in him. All right, and Kyle? Out of the message, it reads, My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Mm. I've got okay. a version, really, really, really old English version, which is KJV. Right. Uh, well, actually, with the KJV, let's um, hit on one second. What was that? Oh, okay. Hit on. We got one more version here. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. 
And KJV, let's go ahead and read 21 through 20, or I'm sorry, 19 through 23. Marcel, you said you had KJV? Yeah, yeah I'm just getting it up now. Uh, 19 through 21. 23. 19 through 23. Who is being past feeling have given ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who is being past feeling have given themselves over unto last viciousness to work all uncleanness with greediness but ye have not so learned christ if so that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in jesus that ye put off concerning the former co conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. Amen. All right, so how many words in verse 21 appear more than once? Him. All right, so we got the word him. How many times is him? Uh, I see it twice. I would agree. Anything else? The. What's that? The. The, the former conversation, the old man. I'm reading the. Am I reading the wrong one? Yeah, verse twenty-one. Yeah, I, I have one. I have have. I'm reading it wrong first. Yeah, have is correct. And what do we have there? How many times? Twice. There we go. Exactly. And I think we have time to. Uh, well, is there anything else that anybody sees? Okay, so I think we have time to go into the through segment. Um, well, we've only got like four minutes left. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and go through seg. I know what I'll do. Let's uh, do the definition, and then everybody remind me that I did the definition, and we'll just do uh, uh, start uh, skip that next week. So the only word that we have in definition here from the Iger Apps Bible Concordance and Strong's Offline is heard, which means be noised, be reported, understand. Occurs 454 times in 402 KJV verses. Uh, 418 times equals hear, six times equals hearken, three times equals audience what about Todd? i didn't have that from it but what do you have something for Todd? well i guess it doesn't have a whole lot of um explanation in my dictionary it just says to teach well there you go there you go awesome so um who'd like well, to cl i get it? some else from that one Mark just said it says to teach, but taught is means someone else has learned. True. It's like that. It's yeah, like it's that. putting it into a tense, isn't it? Amen. Amen. So what it's what it's saying is that you basically you've been taught. So what have you been taught that the the the, the, the like. You're either in Christ or you're in somebody else. So mm. You're either you're either in the truth or you're into deception, or you're into you're uncorrupted or you are corrupted. So you've been taught these things. So there's a there's like a because Jesus is not the son of the God of confusion. So therefore, mm. he doesn't. Uh, it's not in his character to be confusing neither. So. When he's teaching people something, it's when you read his parables, it's us that make them confusing. 
and complex trying to see something so deep and complicated in it but really it's something really really simple it's like speaking to a child amen all right who's going to bring us home uh with a closing prayer come on guys step forward i nominate mark my sister. <coughs> well come on scarlet it's pretty good no, uh, mark's gonna close all right let's pray <clears throat> great mighty father in heaven we thank you that we have a chance again to to study, even though it seems like a small verse with a few words, yet it's powerful. And you are powerful, and that's why it's powerful. And and we ask that it make the powerful changes in our lives that need to be done, that that we may go into this upcoming week in you know prepared for the things that you have um, prepared for us, and that we may be able to to follow you wherever you go, and we thank you and pray this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, until next week. Y'all be blessed. God bless you. I love you guys. Love you too. Bye now. Aloha. Aloha. You gotta wait for that aloha. Right? There we go, right? <laughs> Bye. See ya. Mm-hmm. No, that's not necessarily sexual. Is that where you're getting at? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between lust and covet? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm.